All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, Public Works Committee meeting. Today is uh, Wednesday, uh, June 30th. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you can please call the roll. Chairman Correa? Present. Chairman Correa? Present. Chairman Correa? Present. Chairman Correa? Councilman Here. Councilwoman Carwin? Absent. Councilman Taylor? Here. We have three persons to absent in our forum. Madam Clerk, if you can please uh, take note that uh, we are joined by uh, City Solicitor Kevin McHugh. Uh, Solicitor McHugh, can you please uh, give us your opinion on the uh, legality of uh, holding this meeting uh, remote? Uh, Pursuant to the governor's executive order, it certainly is legal to hold these um, meetings remotely. Thank you, sir. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you can read item number one, please, into the record. Resolution requesting the director of public property to meet a timeline for the new Department of Public Works facilities. Uh, I believe we have uh, Demo Roberts uh, here to speak on the matter. Uh, Mr. Roberts, are you uh, prepared to uh, speak on uh, item number one and uh, let the committee know uh, the progress of uh, the uh, DPW facility? Yes, I am. All right. If you want to uh, proceed on uh, where we stand as far as uh, the uh, demolition of uh, 60 Ernest Street, yeah. we can start off there. All right, sure. I, um, would I be allowed to share my screen if possible? Yes. All right. Madam Clerk, are you prepared to do that? Okay. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Roberts. All right. So I will navigate into the public properties uh, update bear with me for a second so where we are on this matter uh right now we're going through the feasibility study of of the complex we currently have demo going on and i'll show you some progress photos um but the feasibility study is basically proposing uh what you see here in this rendering nothing is final so when i first got here the thought was uh you know, knocking the original building that's being demoed down and kind of building up um, as one phase and then going over to this existing building here for cold and warm storage, knocking that down, building up and then get into the admin building. Well, that really, you know, as the study went on, that didn't really seem like it was gonna line up. It was gonna be pretty costly. And, you know, we do have a budget and we, try to keep with that budget. So it was a reset to say, let's rethink this. What can we do to make this happen under the budget? And this is when, you know, uh, working with uh, the architect, you know, it was uh, said, well, can we use part of this building here? So everything in this clay color is kind of what is being suggested now. The thought is we save the existing building you have your, it's going to be all um, uh, warm storage because it is warm as it is. Uh, so you wouldn't have a cold warm. If you, if we extended uh, this portion that you see in clay here, we will be able to then fit all of the assets of the city in there and it will, you know, it will work for all. Um, so anyways, I do have some numbers on the screen. Uh, of total um, the complex size, parking spaces, cold and warm storage, uh, as you can see on the screen. And again, the idea was to then have some parking spaces, have the admin building built here, have a car wash, and there's a lot of information um, as you can see there. So. The main purpose was originally um, we had all of these things happening and the study uh, in the study, we wanted to know 
first of all, can we at least give the services that uh, DPW provides currently? We did go through um, that. We also asked all of the department um, heads of uh, their wish lists and things like that. And then we just kind of prioritize that way. First of all, under this budget, can we go ahead and provide the existing service? And then if we do, we can add on, you know, to those wish lists, top priority all the way down. Um, so currently, I'm just going to scroll some more. This is the same project. This is the demo portion of the project. <clears throat> when I got involved, this is where we were. This photo that you're seeing here. These are some progress photos. Today, this is where everything stands. When the approach for the demo was actually to do it in two phases. One was to drop the building down and remove the slab, knowing that there were oil tanks underneath uh, the slab, not knowing exactly where the oil tanks uh, were. The thought process was, let's get the building down, let's do some testing underground, and then we can have a good sense of what's there and we can present that information to whomever is bidding and that way we save change orders. So right now we're going through that process and then the feasibility study is going on. Um, I, the demo process, uh, we have all of it down. We have a little parcel of the building left up. The reason why we left that up is because we did discover some, uh, some oily substance in some drain lines. So what we did was we, we said, let's leave that up for now. Let's then expedite the second uh, stage of the demo, which would be the underground work. Do that as a change order so that the, um, the contractor can then extract some of uh, the oily substance out now instead of waiting so we can drop that building. Um, that's where we are now. It should probably conclude uh, the, the feasibility study and the demo should conclude about the same time believe we're just about ready to go, that's then gonna give us the basis of our RFP for design work. That's where we currently stand right now. Any questions? Can you meet any of my uh, committee members have any uh, questions? No, what's Mr. The, Chairman. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, what's, the, Taylor. what's the, ch the time frame for uh, I guess the new one being put in roughly. Um, so what we have to do is, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's, um, you know, it's a, I don't want to guess too much on this, but what we have to do is go through the design right now. Uh, the design timeline is going to look like it's going to be somewhere in the winter time with full construction starting in the spring. If I had to give you my best guess. By the time you go out and you procure this, we're gonna have the documents, this demo will be done, and then you need to give yourself enough time for design. So my best guess will, will be uh, construction will probably start in the spring. And it's still within budget? So the goal is that. So in, in the study that we are doing, I can stop sharing my screen if, if we're good here and I can go back. So as we're going through this, that's the goal. So we know we have a budget of about roughly $30 million. Uh, and that's, as we're going through this feasibility, that's all part of it. So we scaled it to saying, we have to work with these uh, in these parameters and meet this budget. And if there are more beyond that, that can always be an ask for the future, if that makes sense. But the goal is to stay within that budget. This is the reason why we went through the, the wish list um, first of all, again, we wanted to know that we can provide the same service to the community. So can we do that? And, you know, it looks like yes. And then from there, if we have more room, we're going to go down on the wish list. I'll give you an example. One of the wishes on the list was to have a place for the staff to stay, uh, doing big winter storms currently. And it, it's really, it's a good idea, but currently, um, we are battling storms now and we don't have that. 
So if we can add that in the future um, or in this budget, that would be a great ask. If we can't, then we might have to relook at it and say, okay, this is on the wish list, but is it going to be a make or break if the staff stays here or not? And this is where now we can possibly say, well, this is something potentially we can shell out and have a place for staff to stay in winter storms. And then we can stay in budget and do that forward. Or if it does work, we can then add that. That's just one example of what we're going through. And what, uh, what about um, a couple of things? What about the car wash? I heard you say something about a car wash. Yes. So that is one thing that is very high on that list uh, to take care of the asset that car wash is in the design that you see uh, present, uh, a lift, a car wash, and so on. So um, taking care of the equipment um, versus maybe a, a bunk area, uh, and you kind of weigh it out and say maybe the, the car wash area is, is more important than a bunk area. What about, so, uh, Mr. Rob, uh, yeah, one, last one second. So, so, Mr. Roberts, if we can just clarify, like, on the car wash thing, it, it's a multi-purpose wash for both, not just cars, but the trucks as well. All equipment. All equipment, yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. I don't want people out there to think that, you know, the city is building a, uh, a car wash. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a car wash slash truck wash. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Continue. And, uh, yes. Yes, you're right. One last question, Mr. Chairman. Um, the bathrooms, are they going to be redone in the, because uh, I've been getting complaints that the bathrooms are a mess down there in where they're working, where the mechanics and them are working. Are they going to be redone as well? Yes, this is going to be, I mean, it's basically going to be a, a brand new building. Uh, it is going to be a new building. So you're going to have new uh new uh admin spaces administrative uh administrative spaces everything is going to be brought to new the bathrooms will be done uh it's all going to it's going to essentially be a brand new building it's not going to be a patch job okay thank you it's going to be basically correct me if i'm wrong mr roberts but if if everyone decides that it's 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 cost wise to save that existing structure that's there, it would be a complete total uh, uh, rehab of that en entire structure, uh, correct? Yes, it is. Yes, it would be. Um, so the thought process is that to save, we have a beautiful structure there now. Um, we, as we were going through this feasibility study, uh, and then again, to fit it in budget, so the for the first concept was rip everything down and build everything back up. Um, so, you know, looking at it, it may be costly, but it's doing our due diligence. So how, what can we do to keep this um, to, to stay on budget? Right. So we actually uh, had a change to get a structural engineer on site to analyze what was existing to see if that was even feasible as part of this uh, feasibility study. Uh, the answer was yes. The only thing that we will have to do is uh, over on Ernest Street, the columns on en Ernest Street will have to be replaced, but you can save the rest. So if you knock the building down or you do that, either way, you have to get new columns in there anyways, right? So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that being said, the columns will then be replaced because it has a lot of wear and tear. We have all of the data on you know, what to do there. So we're proposing if we can, you know, replace uh, roughly 12 columns, um, if we can replace that and then use the rest, well, that's 12 columns instead of every single steel in that building. Um, so anyways, that's that's the thought process behind that. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Uh, Councilman Taylor, any further questions? No, nope, I'm all set. Thank you. Councilman Narducci. All set, Chairman, thank you. Can I entertain a motion to continue item number one? Motion nope. made, Mr. Chair. A second. Motion's been made by Councilman Narducci, seconded by uh, Leader Taylor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Roberts, and uh, we look forward to having uh, further discussions uh, with you on this matter. So thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. 
Thank you. Uh, at this time, uh, we're going to, uh, Madam Court, uh, um, can I entertain a motion uh, from my committee members to uh, waive items two through six? Waive the readings of items two through six. Motion made, Mr. Chair. Motion has been made Second. by Councilman Narducci, seconded by Councilman Taylor. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. Councilman Narducci. I, I do have um, my constituents on, the Spazianos. Can, uh, can you, as yeah. the chairman, just explain to them what we're doing, please? I, 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 will, I will do that, but we still have a couple more uh, things that we need to address here. So there's been a motion to waive the items uh, two through six. The motion's been uh, made by Councilman Narducci, seconded by Councilman Taylor. All those in favor, aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Also at this time, I need to entertain a motion to make a technical amendment to item number three, which should read flat 97 lot 284 9 Mendham Street. Can I entertain a motion to make that technical amendment? Motion made. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman uh, Narducci, seconded by Leader Taylor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, Councilman Narducci, you have, uh, I believe, Christine Spaziano yes, O'Neill. And her father, Ernie. And, and her father here to speak on item number two. Yeah, her father here to yell. So, uh, Christine, I believe you're muted. If you can unmute yourself. Sure. Uh, so, who's going to speak uh, on behalf of first? Can you identify yourself, and if your uh, dad can identify himself too for the clerks? Uh, Christine Spaziano and Anthony Spaziano. Okay. Uh, who wants to speak and uh, just give us a, a, a very brief uh, uh, thing of what's happening, what you're asking to do? Because tonight we're only here to uh, schedule a public hearing for these matters two through six. Uh, so later on at the public hearing, both you, your dad, and anybody else that you would want to bring, uh, whether it's held here in person or uh, remotely, uh, through Zoom, you would have that opportunity to provide uh, further testimony. But since you're with us this evening, if you want to speak on the matter, uh, uh, you know, just briefly, I will allow that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm going to have my father speak. Okay. Uh, we're looking to have part of uh, a street abandonment, Stanhope Street. Uh, which runs off Rolson Street. Uh, we're just looking to get the okay on it. Uh, the amount of square footage is 946 square feet, and that's about it. Okay, so as I just stated, uh, these matters are going to be set down for a public hearing, and uh, the public hearing uh, actually is going to be advertised in the paper three consecutive times. Uh, so the ad will be run in the Providence Journal for July 5th, 12th, and the 19th. And then uh, on July 26th at uh, 5 p.m., we will hold a uh, public hearing uh, on these matters. And at that time, Anybody uh, within a certain radius of, of your request would have the uh, opportunity to come in and speak either in favor or against it, and then the committee would make a uh, determination. Uh, we're still waiting for some information to come back from, from different uh, uh, departments on, on the uh, matter uh, as uh, the uh, tax assessor's office uh, on what the property could be worth. 
uh, whether or not if there's any objections from uh, National Grid, uh, Gas, Electric, uh, Narragansett Bay Commission, uh, the uh, Department of Public Works, Traffic Engineering, Fire Department, Police Department, etc. So uh, between now and then we should receive all this information and then uh, at the uh, public hearing on J July 26th we'll have all this information uh, before the committee and then at that time uh, we'll be able to uh, make a uh, determination on whether or not your request uh, will be granted and if it's uh, suitable to uh, your needs as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, so, at this time, can I entertain a motion to schedule items number two through six for a... To ask the other petitioners that are on there if they have any questions. Okay, yes. So prior to me doing that, is there anybody else here that would like to speak on a matter, any, uh, any three, four, five, or six? Next one would be Menden Street. The next one would be Menden Street. Okay. Is anybody here that would like to speak briefly on item number three, nine, Mendham Street? Mr. Chairman, if I may, that's, um, they, they couldn't make it tonight. Um, that's Menden Street uh, right over here. Um, in the back of me off of Hagen. And what they're looking to do is make a, a access uh, road, not a road, a uh, driveway to build a new home on that property. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilman Narducci. Item number four, the uh, petitioner was not available to attend this evening. Uh, item number five, I see that uh, John Gary, Mr. Gary. Uh, Mr. Chairman, John Gary here on behalf of the petitioner for Sales Street and Swan Street, which I believe is the next one. Uh, also on your yeah, agenda. Can there, there, yes, you can speak on two yeah. Thank you. Uh, both of these petitions are being presented by the Coletta Group that owns a lot of this property over here is um, uh, really transforming it into a commercial uh, uh, park, an industrial park, which would be productive to the, to the neighborhood and eliminate some of the blight that is uh, there now because it deads on, dead ends onto Route 95. So I think it's, it's a really a, a very productive use of that property and we'll make a fuller presentation, Mr. Chairman, at the public hearing on the, on the full scope of the project. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Garrity. I was just going to say that you know uh, how the uh, process goes, and uh, I look forward to seeing you and your clients uh, at the uh, public hearing. I see that uh, Anthony Coletta is here. Would uh, uh, your client like to speak as well? or I, I probably would like to say a few brief remarks, Mr. Chairman, if that's possible. Mr. Coletta, if you can just please identify yourself for the uh, clerks. Sure. My name is Anthony Coletta owner of the Coletta Group. And Mr. Gary, he was correct in saying that we are proposing an industrial park uh, just off of Eddy, Suite, Eddy Street on Swan Street. And uh, I am prepared for July 22nd, uh, I'm sorry, 26th to do a presentation. Uh, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them now, or we can wait for the 26th. Uh, no, we can wait until the 26th. I did receive uh, your emails and your uh, uh, design uh, drawings and whatnot. So uh, thank you for sending that. And uh, we will make sure that uh, the committee members get it as well to look at too. But we look forward to uh, hearing from you on July 26th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you resend, can you resend that email to the city clerk's office if you have not? Sure, oh, absolutely. Sure. Okay, thank you. Mr. Gary, you can make sure that the that, uh, rendering drawings get over to the clerk's office? Absolutely, Mr. Chairman. Like. So if your client wants to send those to you, you can send them, you can forward them to the clerk's office. Sure will, yes, absolutely. Thank you. So at, that, uh, at this time, uh, uh, can I entertain a motion from my committee members to schedule a public hearing for items two through six? Motion made, Mr. Chair. Second. 
Motion has been made by Councilman Narducci, seconded by Leader Taylor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the matters will be set for a public hearing. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you can read item number seven into the record. Can you speak up a little bit, please? Sure. Petition from Jeffrey K. Pichanti Adler, College and Chen CC 1, Citizen Plaza, 8th Floor, Providence, Rhode Island, 02903, dated April 20, 2021. Requesting our tax easement over city property for the purpose of maintaining public art visual. All right, so at this time, I need to entertain a motion to substitute a new letter that came in from, uh, who did this come from? A letter in agreement from um, Arts, Culture, and Tourism. Stephanie, Stephanie, can you uh, unmute yourself? Stephanie, we have a, a letter that came here. I guess it's, it's a substitute for the original letter that was submitted with this. Can you speak to what it is here? Yes, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, what I have submitted is the executed uh, cooperative use agreement that the City of Providence entered into with the Avenue concept. It was an interim agreement around these art pads and the agenda packet originally had included a draft. Um, so I wanted to make sure that you had a copy of the executed agreement. Okay. So we have that. So can I entertain a motion from my committee to accept this new letter? Motion made, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Narducci, seconded by Leader Taylor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So, Stephanie, if you can just, uh, I know that uh, Stephanie from Art, Culture, and Tourism is here. Uh, I see that, uh, I believe, Yarrow Thorne is here as well. Uh, there's some other individuals that are on the, uh, uh, Rob is here as well. Uh, so, this matter came, I guess, is here before the committee to see if we will agree to give a small portion of the land, I guess, over there so that they can put a, 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 a pad and we can put some type of art structure there. Uh, so, in communications with the uh, tax assessor's office and whatnot, there is no, there is no, uh, fee or anything that it w would be associated with this. It's just basically, what did they call it, Sherry? An air pad easement, an air pad easement. This is just like a basically an air pad easement. Uh, so I guess everybody's just trying to be nice and get our approval and I, I, don't, I don't see any issue with it. Ask Kevin, ask Kevin if we know. Uh, Kevin. Uh, uh, so, I'm sorry, Solicitor McHugh, uh, can you just weigh in on this matter? Uh, but specifically, what, what's your question, though? So it's basically, we're not, can, Stephanie, can you? I, if This is Rob, if I can be of help if, if you're interested uh, with some background, if you'd like, Mr. Chair. Please. Okay, so yeah, we appreciate this. Um, I'm Rob Stolzman for the record at Adler, Pollock and Sheehan. And this, my, my presence here comes under the category of no good deed goes unpunished. My law partner, Jeff Teckington, is on the board of uh, the uh, Avenue Concepts. And Mr. Thorne who's well known to the community as a leader of some of this public art, um, is also on the call and can speak to the specific uh, pad sites if, if, if you care to. But let me give you a little background so you know why we're here. Um, and, and it's in fairness to Mr. McHugh, we've been working with uh, uh, solicitor uh, Adrian Southgate for almost two years on this matter. So this is that she was uh, handling the uh, paperwork. And, and what it is, is uh, the Avenue Concepts, as you know, was a great provider of public art. You see Mr. Thorne has one of the public murals behind them. That's actually on private property. And, and over some years, uh, uh, areas around the city 
adjacent to rights of way, uh, and, and there's a plan attached to the cooperative uh, easement agreement that you have. Um, they're, they're little parcels, uh, sometimes 10 by 15 feet, 20 by 50 feet. They're technically owned by the city because they're in the public road rights of way. And working with Stephanie's office uh, over the last several years, Yarrow's identified and, and Stephanie have identified these sites that would be wonderful for Mr. Thorne to do what he does best, which is get artists to create these works of public art. But in order to put them on public property, technically city property, we went through the exercise of identifying the areas, identifying the utilities that would be necessary for them, creating actual easement forms so that we're not just putting public art without the city reviewing it. So these, these uh, areas have been reviewed by these uh, public works department, uh, Na National Grid has been sent these. Um, you're, and at the end of the day though, you, you're, the city council, through your committee first for a recommendation in the city council, has to grant approval for the use of city properties. Uh, it, it, and, um, and that's why we're here. So the cooperative use agreement with the form of easement have been signed, but the good public stewardship of the properties requires us to come to you, Mr. Chair, and your committee so that you make sure that like hey, this really is in the public interest, safety concerns have been addressed, um, and, uh, and we're making sure we're using these properties under our powers of the city council to grant a, a, a party the right to use public properties. So that's why we're here. We use this, you've, you've done many of these or in similar forms. Um, uh, Mrs. Southgate and I worked on these forms together. We used uh, similar forms that you've used with the universities around town, uh, other arts groups. Uh, the easement allows um, uh, the, the MU concepts to come on the site, erect uh, public art. Um, and, uh, and in the event of, uh, we've addressed uh, liabilities, it, it, whose responsibility it is. Uh, our it's, uh, the art is our responsibility. Um, and, uh, and it's really, uh, it, you're right, it's a good thing, but, but that's why we're here. Mr. Thank Mr. you. Can answer any questions you have on the specific art, and um, and Mr. Teckington's a litigator, so he would just yell at you if you don't do what, if or no, yell at you. No, I would not. And if I might, uh, if I might just append a couple of words to that. Um, first of all, my name's Jeffrey Teckington. I'm unfortunately I'm logged in through Mr. Thorne's link, so I think my name is coming up as Euro Thorne, but I'm I'm Jeffrey Teckington, and um, and that's actually one of the things I wanted to clarify. Our, my letter, uh, it, well, the way the agenda item reads, it, it reads as though it's my application for these easements. I just want to make it clear that it's the, it's the avenue concept, uh, which would be applying for and, if approved, receiving these easements. And the, the only other um, point that I would add to what, to what Rob said is that these, uh, these pads, these pads are already existing. So this isn't, this isn't, um, an idea of, well, this is something prospectively that we're gonna do. These pads have been installed a couple, over the last several, well, several years ago uh, in cooperation with, uh, with the city, uh, Yarrow and his group at the Avenue Concept put in these pads and have been programming them. So if you've been downtown and you've seen these sculptures on these pads over the last year, some of them have been pretty, pretty great, I think. Um, but if you've seen those, uh, that's the avenue concept. And, and the idea here, working with the city, working with Stephanie, working with Adrian, has been to try to uh, formalize that relationship that the avenue has with the city so that everybody knows how this is going to work, uh, know that it will work, know whose responsibility things are and so forth. And that's why we have this cooperative use agreement that tries to spell those out. Uh, but then the, the easements are really important for us so that, so that we know what we can program and where we can put the art, like Rob was saying. So I think it's it's a good thing. It's already been happening for a number of years, and this is a way to just mm -hmm. make sure that we can continue to have this go forward uh, into the future. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Thorne, do we, do, 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 can you elaborate on what type of uh, art structure will be placed on this pad? Uh, yes, I can actually. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm happy to talk. I know Stephanie also has some things as well from arts and culture. 
Um, the Avenue Concept in 2014 installed um, four of these concrete pads. They're six by six feet and four feet deep. They're rated for holding over six tons worth of uh, public art. And we rotate uh, individual work. Each pad has a new piece of work every year that we bring into Rhode Island from all over the world and uh, also feature local artists. Uh, we do all the insurance, we do all the funding, uh, and we also program them um, all year long with apps and um, all sorts of different programming from youth and adults and uh, really trying to celebrate the creative capital that we all live and work in. Um, we have a signature plate system that we do. We have a partnership with a number of, of public works, DPW and, and other organizations. So really try and find sustainable and creative ways to, to bring sculpture that you would normally see in a museum or a sculpture park in some other part of the world you can now come to downtown province and see it in person for free to the public. Okay. Uh, I also have some Thank images you. that I can show too, if uh, someone wants to share a screen, uh, if that helps. Uh, Stephanie? Um, well, I am here to uh, sort of endorse this uh, request for the easements. You know, we have been working with the Avenue concept for many years around this agreement. Um, the Avenue concept uh, is a private nonprofit organization dedicated to public art, and they have made significant investments in the civic realm through these sculpture pads and through the public art installations that they do. Um, so this really is a, a way that we can codify the relationship between the city and the organization and in a way that I think will help make the program even more sustainable and help them to, to grow and develop what we can offer here in Providence. Um, you can see from the interim use agreement that we have been really thorough and thinking through all of the all of the considerations that the city has about showing public art um, and, and sculptural work. Um, so we've been really thorough in testing the idea and we feel really confident in this request um, and, and what it can do for the organization organization. Um, the City of Providence, our public art policies are governed through the Art and City Life uh, Plan and, and that commission. Um, and that is something that, that our office um, staffs. And we have also spoken with them about this agreement. And, and so they also support the granting of this easement. So um, if you have any questions about the relationship with the Avenue concept or the great work that they do, you can see behind Mr. Thorne, one of the past sculptures um, that, that was downtown uh, for about a year. Um, you know, they, they really do uh, present a, a rotating um, exhibition downtown that I think visitors and locals alike really um, are, are benefit from. Mr. Chair, if I may. Councilman Narducci. So I, I just want to be clear um, with these pads and, this, and the art that's uh, put up. Um, once it's done, the city has no responsibilities, like if the cement slab cracks or the art falls or uh, gets destroyed, um, the city has no responsibility to repairing any of it. Is that correct? That would be the responsibility of the organization. Okay. Yes, that's and correct. And, and, and Councilman, your point is well taken. That's part of the reason to have this agreement to make sure that we all know that going forward so that so the city's comfortable and the avenue's comfortable. And do we do we know what you guys want to put there yet? As far as the art itself, do we have a uh, a picture or anything to that effect? So that changes uh, that that changes periodically, part because these as as Mr. Thorne was saying, these these sculptures get rotated okay. every year or so, and there's four different pads. Uh, part of the agreement that we've reached with the city is that we would uh, actually make a presentation to arts, culture, and tourism <clears throat> early in the season to sort of let them know what we're thinking about doing and when so that uh, nothing comes as a great surprise. It, but you know, as we sit here today, we don't know what we're gonna do next year. Um, but, the, but the idea is to put into pro place a process where the city is comfortable on that as well. Okay, so it won't be a statue of me. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, guys. And, and just as a point of clarification, the presentation is made to the Art and City Life Commission, um, and I believe this year they came in and presented in March. Sorry, thank you. you know, that's thank you. Guys. So with that, uh, you're welcome. 
With that being said, uh, I mean, I've had the opportunity uh, to work with uh, Mr. Thorne over the years, uh, mainly down at the uh, Manton Skate Park. Uh, we've done some uh, various graffiti uh, throwdowns there with the, uh, the kids with skating and, and everything. Uh, it was a, a huge success. Uh, we had a, a, an afternoon of uh, painting uh, on the wall and whatnot down there. I look forward to uh, reaching out to uh, uh, Yaro again and uh, seeing if we can have another one of those on a Saturday. Uh, have the uh, all the kids come down again. Uh, we had we had a cookout, hamburgers and hot dogs and everything. It was it was a really really good event. Uh, so uh, I have uh, full confidence in in uh, Yaro's art that he has put forth throughout the entire city. Uh, I enjoy walking around downtown, looking at the various uh, murals that have been painted, as well as uh, some of the art sculptures that are around. So uh, I want to thank uh, Yaro for his uh, continued uh, work uh, with the art uh, displays here in uh, Providence. Uh, with that being said, Councilman Taylor, Majority Leader Taylor, would you, did you have anything you need to add? Uh, nope, I'm all set. Thank you. Mr. Uh, McHugh, I have the law department. I know that uh, Ms. Southgate is no longer with us. Have you had the opportunity to uh, look over this agreement and are all the I's uh, dotted and the T's crossed? Uh, would the law department be comfortable with this committee passing this? I, I can't say, uh, Councilman, because I was just assigned this uh, this afternoon, so I have not been able to look at it. Um, don't, um, Deputy, former Deputy City Solicitor uh, Southgate is still working under the 75 day rule. So she still is available to work. So maybe uh, okay. it would be a good idea if we contacted her. I think she's got a temporary office up on the third floor here at uh, 444. And so uh, as Mr. So Stolten said, she would be working. That, that's fine. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Hold sorry. on one second. So Mr. McHugh, I mean, would it be, this committee could pass this audit committee tonight uh, with the recommendation that a letter of uh, support would need to come from the uh, law department before it, any odd was constructed on it? Is that um, doable, uh, yes, Stephanie? Yeah. yeah, I believe so. I don't know if she uh, issued a written opinion on that. If I may, it might be help if just to give you some information, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, though. Yeah, sorry for interrupting, but uh, this, uh, uh, Mr. Dana did sign off on this and technically signed off on behalf of the solicitor's department on April uh, 24th, I think his signature was, of 2021. And, and we're really comfortable with revisiting it, et cetera. This has all been very cooperative and, and thorough. But I just wanted you to be aware that uh, Adrian had passed this up for Mr. Dana's signature on April in April of 2021. Well, if I, I I haven't uh, seen I haven't seen it, but if the city solicitor signed off on it, then that's uh, dispositive. Sure, uh, we have that be an, uh, official uh, opinion of the solicitor. So we wouldn't need to revisit it if the solicitor has already. So, if I may. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. McHugh. So based on, on uh, this new letter that we put into the record uh, that came in, uh, I do have it here in front of me, and it has been uh, signed by City Solicitor uh, Jeff Dana. Uh, it's been signed by Yaro Thorne from the Avenue Concepts, and it's been also signed by the Chief Operating Officer, Sabrina Solaris Hahn. Uh, and this was all uh, done here, signed by a notary and whatnot. It, it is here officially stamped in the clerk's office. So with that being said, uh, can I have a motion to approve item number seven? Motion made, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion made by Councilman Narducci, seconded by Leader Narducci. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The matter passes. Uh, Stephanie and uh, Mr. Thorne, I look forward to uh, seeing this uh, piece of art uh, constructed. 
so good luck. And again, like I said, I'd like to uh, work with you bringing a, uh, another event uh, to my uh, skate park here for my uh, constituents and uh, kids up in uh, Mount Pleasant. So thank you. Uh, with, with that being said, there's no further business before this uh, Committee of Public Works. May I entertain a motion to adjourn? Motion made, Mr. Chair. Second. I'm sure. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Narducci, seconded by Count, uh, Leader Taylor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We stand adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Happy Fourth of July.